So when I was told I had two or three minutes to sum up my kind of feelings about Dave, I, I really um, was hard, hard pressed. And I was thinking that maybe one way to start, and this echoes a little bit of what Marcia said, is that Dave is somewhat of a renaissance man. I mean, I think, you know, we we've, we've all know him in different contexts, and I've known Dave since 1983, when I um, knew nothing about asylum law and was recruited um, as a volunteer, and have had the pleasure over the 30 years since um, to spend lots of time with Dave in lots of situations, and he's a person who you can talk any topic, history, politics, travel, culture. Dave is so erudite. He is so steeped in it. And when you think about that kind of depth of his intellectual curiosity, you understand when he kind of, you know, sort of dropped into the lawyers committee, where you have people from around the world, where doing your job well means understanding the context and the lives of these people, understanding the political situation, understanding the patterns um, that cause people to be targets of persecution, you can understand why it was such a great fit of Dave and the Lawyers Committee with sort of that um, richness of his, his, his intellectual curiosity. And, you know, Dave came and, and, and didn't leave, and at the end of my remarks I'll say something where I, about how I don't think he's, he's really leaving us now. But um, the, the, the piece I want to touch on is a piece that I think so many other people have touched on, is that what um, one of the qualities of Dave, even though he likes to come across like a real curmudgeon, you know, and I think we've all seen that side of the, that kind of the, 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 the cranky Dave, you know, the, the whatever Dave. But the, I think those of us who have been, you know, privileged enough to really know Dave know that there is a heart that is so large inside him. There is just such a warmth and such a caring. Uh, such a compassion, and that not only you know is that something that in, has enabled him, as many people said, to really connect with the clients, um, but it has you know allowed him to connect us all together. When I think of the way in which Dave, in in almost every interaction where there is an opportunity for him to give credit to somebody else and then connect that somebody else to somebody else to somebody else. And, you know, there's this great, I guess, you know, expression in Spanish like echando las flores, you know, like flattering people or giving people, you know, throwing flowers, sort of like making everyone feel so good about themselves and connecting them. And that's what I think of when I really think of, of Dave is just this radi sort of radiating warmth, you know, sort of the center of the spoke of the wheel and just connecting us all by his sort of warmth and caring. And, you know, I know he sort of has said that he's retiring from the Lawyers Committee. I actually saw that above his, you know, his signature line at the Lawyers Committee is now Volunteer Emeritus, which doesn't exactly <laughs> spell somebody who's actually like leaving. And we, we at um, Center for Gender and Refugee Studies, we, we were, didn't even wait a decent amount of time to like start recruiting him to be on our board. And I think many people will be saying, we're not letting Dave go because here's a guy who just has so much to give on so many levels and we're not going to really let him leave this community even if he sort of says that he's retiring. So Dave, I love you. I know so many others in this room love you and, um, and you're not leaving. So. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Mark Silverman, and uh, because I'm someone who follows all the rules and regulations, <laughs> I'm going to keep this very short. Uh, October, uh, Mark Aronson actually kind of uh, introduced this, uh, but it was actually October of 1983, this gentleman uh, walked into my office and said, I'm Dave Rurick, and I'd like to volunteer for six months. <laughs> well, Dave Rourke uh, outlasted all of us in the Lawyers Committee. Robert hung in there as long as he could. Robert Rubin, who made the asylum program possible. Uh, 
and he made all the difference in the world. At that time, we were representing every Salvadoran and then every Guatemalan who uh, was in deportation proceedings. And it wouldn't have happened without Dave. Uh, the first year, we did 200 cases. And it wouldn't have been possible without Dave. He made all the difference then and over years to people's lives, individual clients' lives, but also through his thinking, uh, through his caring, uh, in terms of the issues that underlined uh, the asylum cases. Uh, and it's just been a pleasure, it was a pleasure of me to work with him all those years, uh, and it's a pleasure to know him as a friend. Uh, he's a wonderful person and has made a wonderful contribution to the lives of individuals and to our society. Hi, I'm Mark Vanderhoud, um, and um, I have just a little bit different uh, perspective, um, but the same love. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I've been in uh, private practice ever since I've known Dave, and uh, Dave would come to the uh, uh, Lawyers Guild Immigration Committee meetings and talk about uh, the program, and he'd say, you know, Mark, you got to get uh, uh, more of the private bar involved here, and he just had this great vision. Um, you know, with all the other people who have been mentioned who, who started the project here, uh, the program. The, the asylum program here, you know, was, uh, uh, took off. It started with uh, uh, Salvador and Guatemalan uh, refugees primarily uh, coming off um, another program that had been started previously, actually the Caring with it, the Father Moriarty uh, program, which was a model for that. Um, but um, it just really filled this void, and then the the really the hard work of Dave and the vision of getting the the lawyers and the and the, the volunteer lawyers and the mentoring lawyers and then the interpreters and the law students and and everybody working together to help uh, each case uh, was just something that he really spearheaded and really it really made happen. Um, but he he did it with a a passion and he did it with a, a love uh, of both the clients obviously that he was uh, helping to represent and, and interviewing and knowing they, they would make a good case and a meaningful case um, but also uh, the whole model of doing the training and training um, the volunteer attorneys and getting all the components involved and then giving everybody a real chance to work with these amazing people who we all have been representing all these years. And it really is a gift. You know, it's a gift that Dave, that Dave allowed to happen uh, for the interpreters, for the lawyers, for the mentoring lawyers, for the law students. And Dave, um, I know you're hiding behind that piece of wood. Come <laughs> <laughs> step forward, man. Um, you know, you've just been this amazing rock for, for decades now, and it's, I guess it's been, you know, I don't know how many years. So, uh, a long time, uh, over 30 years now, um, that we've been working together and many people here in this room and just the amount of love that people feel for you, uh, take with you, man, because many, many people love you a whole lot.